What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Review. We're going to give our mid-season review of the Book of Fett. Brian, I'm your... What, let me introduce myself. My name is Pablo. I'm your host for today, and always joining me is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, we've been talking about other stuff. We've had a few shows, and we've briefly talked about um, the Book of Fett. We've talked, spoken more about it offline giving our thoughts on each episode that comes uh but now we're going to give our mid-season review now that we're halfway through this uh, i want to just talk about what you think a bit about it so far how it started off some of the backlash that it has gotten in terms of people not like not liking it as much as they thought they would i think it goes for both of us as well although it still shows promise um but yeah let's talk about the book of fat brian i think for me anyway the book of fat started off well there were some people complaining about it being too slow too short i thought it started off perfectly because i know what they were building towards um what were your thoughts your initial thoughts when you saw the first episode of the book of fat and i and i you know and i think you and i both agree that they should have come out with both episodes instead of just one um your thoughts yeah i think you know count me in the count me in the camp of i'm entertained but modestly disappointed overall by the show uh and some specific reasons why and i think there's some improvements that could be made um but I think that it got off to a fine start. I mean, I feel like you know, episode one wasn't amazing, but it yeah. was fine. Episode two, I thought, was considerably better. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't care for episode three and then episode I four. I, I, I generally liked episode four. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of been uneven. But I think, you know, the, the premise of the show... They've, they've carried through, at least in the present day, this idea of, the, you know, establishing yourself as a crime boss. I think we expected that. We should yeah. talk about the use of the flashback, right, to fill in the time gap. That's clearly a device they're featuring, and we're getting closer, like we're kind of catching up. But, yeah. Um, like, I don't know. I mean, like, overall, if you said, like, midway through the show, I clearly want to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the show has had as clear a direction as maybe it could have had. And it's probably unfairly being held up to the standard of the Mandalorian, which is pretty tough. To yeah. stop. And I think we're finding that out. With the show. Yeah. I think the expectation of Boba Fett and how he would be portrayed in this show, the expectations I think were a bit high. Um, you gotta, you have to consider who Boba Fett is if you think about it, and what happened in the, in the beginning of that first episode of him being stripped of, I guess, his reputation, his the fear that he strikes in, in people's eyes. Nobody's probably ever seen him without his, so probably people don't even know what this guy looks like. He even said it in the fourth episode when he lost his his armor. You know, he lost his reputation. And so he had to start from scratch. And I think throughout that experience, he realized what I guess was better. This is a different Boba Fett uh, than the one that we're... So, not necessarily sort of accustomed because he's all he's always been a mystery to people and i think people enjoyed that about him people enjoyed about enjoyed him um his reputation and and and, and sort of i guess the mandalorian reminds me more of boba fett of what he's supposed to be this badass dude right and we're not seeing that um, I think the bar was set for mandalorian i think people were uh, waiting for some uh, something better than what we've been given so far. And it's been a slow burn. Uh, and again, episode three wasn't my favorite episode. I was, I, I, at this point, I'm getting frustrated 
with the with the show. You hit on bingo. The Mandal. So let's talk about Boba and Tamira Morrison in the role. The Mandalorian basically took all of Boba Fett's tricks as we yeah. knew them and imagined them in the original trilogy. Right? We basically got two snippets of Boba Fett greatness in the original trilogy when he is clever enough to hide in the trash. Mm-hmm. No other bounty hunter can figure out where the Falcon is. And then in Return of the Jedi, when he's on the sail barge, and he kind of gives Luke a little bit of trouble Mm -hmm. relative to everyone else before he gets served and dumped in the Sarlacc. So the Mandalorian basically took that idea and just took all the tools and all the weapons and all of the action skills and put them into that character. So Mm -hmm. we've seen that for two seasons. This show came in knowing that if they did that all over again, it was over before it began. Because yeah. everyone would have pilloried them for being like, you're just a Mandalorian ripoff. We've already seen that. Yeah. So I think that created a problem and a challenge where they had to redefine the Mira Morrison, who is 61 years old. Let's also not discount that. Yeah. And I think he looks kind of 61 at times in this yeah. show. And I don't think this show has quite cracked the code on how they want him to portray this version of the character. And maybe it's because the character itself is not supposed to know exactly what he is yet. But I think it's gone out of its way to almost make it seem like he's not this amazing fighter anymore. To a point where I think because he's named Boba Fett, and this is one of my concerns... And he had this stigma and this reputation coming in. It is a letdown to see him getting beaten up and to see him in fights not using the rocket pack or the grappling hooks and all the tricks. I think in a weird way, like if this character wasn't named Boba Fett, it wouldn't be as much of a concern. But because Mm -hmm. he is, there's that expectation. And I just don't think this show has quite solved like what they want him to be. So that's my thoughts on the the Boba Fett versus Mandalorian problem, if you will, in this show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you had a similar reaction or what, I don't know, what were your expectations? Because like, I knew he was 61. I wasn't expecting him to be like flying all around. I just, I don't know. I don't know what I expected. It wasn't necessarily this though. I think this is, this is a situation where you don't listen to the actor and say, oh, I want to do my own. No, no, no. We're going to get a stuff. <laughs> you. you know, I think these are these situations where you got to sort of, uh, taken control of what it is you want this to look like uh i don't know what i was going to expect i don't think anyone really did i think mandalorian visually already showed us what boba fett was supposed to be like right um and now this is something way different and the different i don't mind i just feel like is and i'll and i'll let you answer this question do you think we got too much exposition for what we'll eventually see or where we're heading towards as the show continues to hint, I think, in the third and fourth episode. Yeah, um, I'll expand on the exposition point in a second because I think it's actually it's one of the strangest choices the show has made. Um, but I do think, to stay on the action point for a second... Mm-hmm. I think they need to tilt the needle. They need to turn the knob a little bit back in his favor. He can't be getting his butt kicked in all of these fights. He and like quite honestly, and Fennec almost, is outshining him. Yeah, and by the way, Ming Na Wen is fifty eight. Just so you know, wow. so, so she's fifty eight wow. doing what she's That's doing. Crazy. He may, she's making him look bad. <laughs> um, really, yo? Ming Na Wen is fifty eight years old. Wow, she was. Trying- and by the way, like I was thinking about this the other day. She might have done the most fighting of any actress on TV today when you factor in her Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. character and this show yeah. and Mandalorian. I mean, she's yeah. basically been fighting on screen for 10 years yeah, well, yeah. and is quite good at it. <laughs> so yeah. um, I just think that part of the reason I think the action is a little bit of a struggle for me is that his name still carries a reputation in this show and that's clear 
But every time we see him actually draw, he's kind of clumsy. And he, like, even when he's chasing and trying to swat that little droid in the hangar, yeah. he kind of looks goofy. And I like, I think he needs a moment or two, even if it's in a flashback, where you're kind of like, oh, right, this is why everyone was terrified of this dude, of all the yeah. bounty hunters. And I don't think we've quite gotten that. So I hope they give it to him at some point. Well, I think this last episode sets this up. With the bargain, not a, is it a bargain or, or, or a deal that he's made with the rest of the criminal organizations, right? Mm. I'm going to take out all these enemies. I'm going to do it. In return, I want your lawyer, whatever, right? right? This is, I listen, I'm expecting a lot. Now my expectations are even higher now. You said I'm going to take, I'm going to do this, right? He obviously not going to do it alone. He's going to have Fennec and... Uh, Black Chris Hanston, right? Um, I'm interested in seeing how this is going to look like. Hopefully, they give him the moments, similar moments that Mandalorian had in pretty much every episode, right? Where this guy is 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 is, is the is the guy, right? So, I think they're setting it, setting it up for that. Hopefully, visually, it looks good and not. Um, like an old man trying to do, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it just has to look impressive. Yeah, I agree. But that's, you know, and that's where, you know, that scene, it, it, it's, it's, it's very much out of many crime shows. But I was actually thinking about, I was actually thinking about the Dark Knight when the Joker is introduced, right? And he's got all the dudes there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, and they, they kind of had that same reaction as this episode. Like, why, why are we listening to this guy? But yeah. in that movie, the smart thing they do is they give him that moment with the pencil trick. Yes. And it shows that, like, whatever this guy looks like and sounds like, he's lethal in a second if he has yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that needs that. He, he needs to flash that moment of, like, ruthlessness. But right now, he's still <laughs> kind of bartering and trading and relying on logic and good sense. He, he's yeah, going to yeah. need to rip someone, basically, to, well, to get I, I, everyone I, in line, I, I think. I did, like... That um, I don't know if that what's the what's the name of that beast the that he has the I, don't, yeah, I don't right. know I don't I don't know if it understands English, but he reacted as soon as he said, "Why don't we just kill you?" Right, or something like yeah. that, and and, and and the thing reacted like, yeah, "How does right. this dude know?" But that was a that was a pretty cool moment. We still haven't seen um, the reputation that that Boba Fett used to have in this yet. He obviously. He was ruthless when he took out one of the ninjas and blew him up, but we still we haven't gotten more of that yeah. um, and, and and his reason to do that yet. So hopefully, let's see how this um, um, moves on uh, in the next three episodes because um, he he's being asked to do a lot. He's asking a lot of himself to do what he says he's going to do and how's he, how he's going to do it and who he's going to utilize to get uh, this stuff done uh, is going to be very interesting. But yeah. Um, so I want to go back to your but, point on exposition. Yeah, uh, yes. Because yes. I think this show is edited and ordered incorrectly. And I think it's hurting the show. And I don't know why. So I have no, to be clear, I think the flashback is a time device. It works fine. Actually, yeah. I actually kind of, I was excited when we got a scene of him hanging inside the Starlock. I was actually yeah. kind of fired up. I was like, all right, we're, we're in here. We're, <laughs> we're going to go do this. Yeah. No imagination. But there's a couple of key scenes in this show, which I feel like have come out of sequence. And it, it's kind of made it weird to me. So I commented to you that I thought the first episode ended in the wrong place. I think it should have ended when he meets the huts and Chrysanthemum on the streets of Tatooine, that would have been a much better cliffhanger that would have gotten everyone fired up about like, yeah. what kind of world are we entering? So that's yes. like editing mistake. Number one is like, why did the show end where it did when five minutes, literally five minutes later, there was this huge canonical moment. Cause Chrysanthemum's a big deal in the star Wars comics and mm. call back to the huts is obviously huge to anyone as a fan of the old trilogy. Like, didn't get that second one was the there's a scene where the droid the eight the white droid that always kind of advises him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gives you like basically the history of what happened 
when Jabba died. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why was that so deep in the show? I feel like they could have worked that scene into like the first episode and it would have laid the groundwork a little bit better for like, all right, we're in this world, but here's like the players since we were last here, like a quick catch up. But they wait like three episodes to give it to you. And by then you're like, wait, I I wish I'd known this like two episodes ago. So that was number one. And then this whole fourth episode, I really wish it was the second episode in a weird way. I feel like it should have been earlier in the show because it would have explained the change in his motivations as a character and it would have set the stage for this criminal underworld. For us to get it in literally the back half of the show, it just felt like we've been wandering for three episodes and now we're kind of filling in some blanks but in a way that makes me feel like, oh, why didn't you just do this as the second part of the show. And so that's what I, mean. I think this show, it's literally like, it's literally like it's scrambled. I would literally like just mix and match the pieces differently. And I think people would have reacted to the show a little bit better than they have. Yeah. I think revealing to us so early on about the Tuscan Raiders being annihilated, I think that obviously, um, affected him and i think they would have it would have done better if they revealed it later on in, i agree in, in a, yeah in a, in a, it, it in a better off. scene yeah, yeah 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 they don't have to give us everything that's what i mean by is there too much exposition and they're just giving us everything that means something too early that when we get to boba fett and his actions and stuff we don't get enough of that yeah no that's what, and that's what i mean it's like in some ways yeah that tuscan moment should have come later and it could have. There's no reason it couldn't have. But I felt like when he gave that, when he's talking to Fennec about how he rethought his role as a bounty hunter, I'm like, I needed this earlier. Because up until now, I've been like, this dude is wandering around, setting himself up as the next Jabba. And I'm like, why? Like, why? Like, why does he not want to be a bounty hunter? Why does he want to rule with respect? Why am I waiting half of this season to find that out? And this answers it for you. And I'm like, okay, I buy it. I just. Yeah. I just wish I had known it earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so that that's the other, th- and, the, and the last part of the exposition point I do want to make, I don't know if it's coincidence, but Robert Rodriguez is the showrunner. Mm-hmm. This. He directed episodes one and three. I believe, I think you and I both feel like two and four are the good episodes. Yeah. And one and three are the shakier ones. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but I'm just pointing out that the two that he did not direct were the better ones versus he was the hype man for this show. And like so far, not quite getting there. So I don't know what to make of that either. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I don't know if you remember Neil Elevato. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he said, I don't like Robert Rodriguez and, and it showed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn. Um, I'm interested in seeing if he, if he sticks with it and watches episode. Uh, two and four without knowing who's directing it and, and, and so that he can tell me what he liked uh, uh, about it. Um, and the better, see, I mean, yeah. It's weird because like Robert Rodriguez is, is known as a pretty good action director and the episode of Mandalorian he did was quite good. Yes. But the set, the, the set piece of the train in episode two and the set piece in episode four where they're blasting their way into the hangar to steal the ship mm-hmm. are vastly superior to that weird speeder chase that Robert Rodriguez directed in episode three, which just looked really cheap and kind yeah. of strange. And like, I, I don't get it. So I don't know what's going on. I'm in this. I, I, um, and by the way, weird blast from the past. The guy who directed episode four, I saw the name. I was like, that's really familiar. He's the dude who did that web Mortal Kombat series like 10 years ago. You remember that? Oh, wow. Same dude. Wow. Like he's kind of been kicking around doing some TV here and there. Good and I was like, oh, that's, the, that's the guy. I was like, that's really random. So. Good for him. So, so far, I like where the show is heading. It just, I, I watched it twice. I like, I watched it back to back. I watched it, you know, think, thought about it, and then I watched it again because I, I really enjoyed it and I like where it, things are heading. Um, and just like you, I wish I would have gotten a lot of this episode earlier. There's just, again, to me, it's just too much exposition. I don't need to know every single detail, just those pivotal moments. In, in his uh, in his journey to what he wants to accomplish. Do you think this show is getting another season? I 
I think it'll all depend on how the rest of the season goes. It doesn't feel like it's been a massive hit. You know, it's been pretty yeah. pretty mixed reception. And it is yeah. a slow to develop. And so with only three episodes left, part of me is skeptical that this was written as like an ending. But at the same time, I don't know that they've set themselves up to really guarantee a, a season two of this. Yeah. We'll see where it ends up. If he if he achieves his goal. And I don't know. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I, I think it'll all depend on how the rest of the season go and what and what uh and where he ends up at the end of this, having to accomplish a lot, I think. So it's gonna be very interesting on where they end up with it with this and whether it calls for him to make cameos in certain shows, who knows? Um, but uh I guess we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, that's our show for um the book of Fett mid-season review let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about uh the book of fed so far um and whether you think we're gonna probably get a second season and is there too is it too much exposition let us know in the comment section below we'll see you next time on the nerd gen review